Preserved lemons, the most underrated condiment I've discovered in recent years. The humble name left out an important feature: the fermentation seriously elevates the taste, in addition to extending shelf life. If you have frozen lemon zest and juice in the past, you will like this shelf-stable alternative. In this video, I will share all my experiments with different methods for lacto fermentation, from brining with citric acid to using lactobacillus from water kefir grains. The traditional method simply calls for salting up lemons, pounding them down to submerge everything in juice, and let time do the magic. Not difficult, but can be messy. It costs quite a lot of fresh lemon juice, and also makes the mixture kind of cloudy to inspect. If you're new to fermentation and weary of gross things growing where you can't see them, try starting with brining. Quick note on the ingredient: instead of looking for the best organic Maya lemons locally available, which somehow became standard internet advice, I'm going to strongly recommend my favorite, clapped tier lemons for preserving. If you're worried about pesticide residue, give them a salt scrub and a rinse. The thicker skin is actually a bonus in my opinion. Because the peels are actually the most prized part, a lot of recipes actually call for discarding everything but the peels in the end. As preservation removes bitterness, that thick pith will become entirely edible, and you will get fleshier result in the end. If you have an abundance of Meyer lemons, by all means use them. Just don't spend extra money or time looking for fancy stuff to ferment. Now about the brining method. The underlying mechanism works the same way as old-fashioned pickles and sauerkraut. Just create a two to three percent salt solution that fully submerges whatever you're fermenting, which will eliminate most bacteria while allowing the salt-tolerant lactic acid bacteria to thrive. Keep in mind the salt percent is on the total weight of water and whatever you're fermenting. As the probiotics grow, they produce more and more lactic acid, which lowers the pH of the environment and further keeps harmful bacteria from growing. The traditional ferment in juice method has the added acidity from the fruit as a head start and an additional layer of protection against bad bacteria. If you're fermenting cut up pieces or even whole lemons, you can just use salt and rely on osmosis to get you that acid boost. Whole lemons will ferment slower, but couldn't be easier, and the pulp won't get as salty, making them more versatile in different recipes. If you're fermenting just the peels, though, say after juicing your fresh lemons for desserts or cocktails, you can substitute fresh juice with bottled juice or citric acid. Fermentation will wipe out quite a bit of the difference. For bottled juice, the cheaper variety from concentrates will be subtly noticeable if you taste for it. But the slightly better options, not from concentrates, are completely interchangeable with fresh, in my opinion. Citric acid came out tasting remarkably clean to my pleasant surprise. You can find them in the candy aisle for cheap, and one bottle lasts like forever. I got mine to make DIY sodium citrate for nachos and can't seem to use it up. My only caveat is that. The standard conversion ratio of a quarter teaspoon citric acid for a tablespoon juice was really erring on the side of overshooting the acid for canning. I used four teaspoon per cup based on this conversion ratio, and the brine turns out to be much more sour than both the bottled and fresh juice, which of course had me immediately look up citric acid content in different citrus juice. Lo and behold. Natural lemon juice is only about 4.8% citric acid, so two to three teaspoon per cup water would be plenty. Don't underestimate the sourness a whole extra teaspoon of this stuff adds. You can also vacuum ferment small portion quickly. Just salt your lemon slices generously and seal them tight. In around five days, they will puff up like a balloon. This method is super quick, but not so shelf stable long term. You're gonna want to move them into the fridge within a week. Because the lemon slices are not fully covered anymore towards the end, things can grow on the surface if you leave them out for too long. An even more versatile quick ferment is water kefir, which is like kombucha's less vinegary cousin. These are the starter grains, which is a mix of lactic acid bacteria and yeast. They can feed on any sugary solution, but two-stage fermentation is recommended if you want to reuse them like forever. Stage one is letting them sit in a six percent sugar solution at room temperature for at least two days, 
and stage two is adding any juice or fruits for flavoring, and wait for carbonation to build up to your desired level. The stage one liquid is already full of lactobacillus, great for fermenting peels of any citrus you just juiced, lemons, orange, grapefruits, you name it. If you've ever left your stage one ferment alone for too long and it's gotten too dry and tart to drink straight, that throwaway liquid actually makes an even better fermentation starter. For those who are curious, yes, I have used this hack for sourdough. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video on that. Back to lemons. You can make preserves that aren't at all salted, making them perfect for sweet applications like cocktail mixers, desserts, smoothies, or sorbet. One caveat, the bitterness of the pith will leak into the drink over time. So unless you are making this with old stage 1 liquid that you have no intention of drinking, either thinly shave the citrus zest and minimize any pith included, or pull out your secondary ferment every 2-3 to three days and replace with new stage 1 liquid. And drink the lemony, not too bitter bubbly you just poured out. Your citrus peels are thoroughly fermented when they sink instead of float in bottle. For extra carbonation, try brown sugar instead of white sugar for stage 1. Check out this lime zest kefir. While whole fruit slices are fine for water kefir, if you're brining a high sugar content citrus like orange or grapefruit, stick with just the peels. The sugar in the pulp will ferment into alcohol. You'll have some really off-putting, salty hard cider. I brined orange peels in citric acid, and it smelled amazing within a week. I made carnitas with it. You can also add it to marinara, ceviche, or soy braised anything. It makes a really nice secret ingredient. I did get a warped jarlet from this super active ferment though, so be sure to degas your jars regularly if making soda or kitchen bomb is not your intention. For a more hands-off approach, you can drill a hole in any pasta jarlet and put an airlock on it, or seal the opening with breathable medical tape. Alternatively, you can buy some drinking jarlet with pre-drilled holes. These flip cap attachment for mason jars are great options too. Any built-up pressure will just lift the cap, after which gravity will close it for you. Now for the side-by-side -side comparisons. I'm using the peels brined in natural lemon juice as the control. Next to the peels fermented in bottled lemon juice and citric acid. Then a vacuum sealed version. And finally, the water kefir. The colors are very similar, actually quite close to fresh lemons, unlike limes, which lost their bright green in half a week. Oranges didn't change color as quickly, but did lighten over time. Eventually, preserved limes and oranges will all look kinda close to lemons, it seems. The texture difference was obvious even before tasting. The water kefir and vacuum bag batches are firmer compared to control which is expected since they went through a shorter, week-long fermentation. For the same month-long fermentation, the citric acid batch felt noticeably softer than the lemon juice batches, both bottled and fresh, which ended up being a lot closer in texture to each other. For the taste comparison, the water kefir batch tasted discernibly fermenty and quite tart, but not nearly as acidic as the vacuumed one. The vacuum version tasted more sour, but less fermenty. It's also more lemony, which makes sense in retrospect since the lemon hasn't been as diluted. The citric acid was almost mushy. It tasted deeply fermented and very tart. Go with a shorter fermentation time if you're using this method. Check around 3-5 to five days. Even at a lower concentration, citric acid was so potent that it sufficiently fermented my orange peels in less than a week. Bottled juice tasted more salty and less tart than citric acid, which was strange since they had the same salt percent. I wonder if our perception of saltiness and sourness actually interferes with one another. The control batch tasted very salty but also very lemony so refreshing that it almost covers up the fermenting notes. If you have extra lemons, 
the complex flavor compound in fresh juice will add a marginal but noticeable improvement, even with extended fermentation time. If you plan on using the juice for lemonade though, the peels only preserves are still well worth making and will still be fresher tasting than a lot of store-bought options that went through heat treatment to be shelf-stable. Now, what can you do with preserved lemons? If you have time, tagines are classic. If you don't, quinoas are excellent. I first discovered preserved lemons after being dazzled by the best quinoa salad I've ever had at a work outing, which in and of itself isn't saying much because I've only ever begrudgingly eaten quinoa before for its health benefit. Who would have known soft chickpeas and bright lemon peels can make health food completely not depressing? Use a juicy, flavorful tomato like Campari and you won't even need a dressing. I do like adding a few spoonful of the brine because they smelled too good not to use. Tagines were completely new concepts to me, but I was determined to find more uses for these lemons. The gist is, braise any meat until tender in a Moroccan spice blend, which commonly include coriander, turmeric, ginger, paprika, garlic, parsley, kind of like a curry with saffron, olives, and preserved lemons. Unlike in salads, preserved peels are not finely chopped here, but rather kept in large slices. The braising will draw out much of the salt, making it actually very palatable to take a big bite of this. To avoid diluting the flavor too much, they're usually added after meat had been tenderized, alongside the olives. From there, just give it 10 to 15 minutes for the flavors to marry, and you're ready to break bread, which is the typical way to serve tagine, even though the braise is actually perfect over rice too. The preserves also make great gin and tonic, dirty martini, or margaritas. Use your imagination, add it to anything that could use a salty, citrusy kick. Hi everyone, thank you so much for helping this channel reach 10k sub. I really tried to come up with a less weird topic for a 10k special, but just couldn't think of a popular dish that I'm genuinely curious about at this time or have anything to add to. So I opted to just be my weird self, algorithm be damned. If you have any kitchen conundrums or what ifs on your mind, please do let me know in the comments below. It actually really helps with the creative process. Thank you so much for making it this far. I really hope you stick around.